Today's topic, or the first topic I'd like to kick off with, mm. is a very bit of a weird one. It is, what if people actually told the truth? Now, that's... <laughs> <laughs> now that sounds a little bit I don't mean that to sound as sort of shifty as it does like I don't mean that people are running around lying all day what I am interested in is where it started from is when you've been talking about uh if you go on generally speaking social media but even in the real world it's all business as usual and everything's wonderful yeah, and we're all happy right, and yeah yeah rah rah you know and I'm getting all these cool online presents for myself yes um but behind that is a whole different range of stories that people keep to themselves, yes. within themselves, and never, ever, almost ever let out, and, and maybe even for, for, for a decade or longer. So I'm interested in what if everyone all of a sudden just started letting out those truths? <laughs> so we're talking like, what's that movie, Jim Carrey, Lie, Lie? Lie, Lie. I can't <laughs> lie. <laughs> so... Wouldn't work so well for the lawyer. Maybe, maybe... Not oh. you, him. Oh. Wasn't he a lawyer? Sheepers, creepers. Wasn't he a li- lawyer? <laughs> he was a lawyer. He was an American lawyer, they're different. L- lawyers aren't liars. No, never. No. You're not. Um, so, so maybe yes, that's, lie, extre- lie. that's the extreme version. That is the extreme version. But we're um, talking about some middle point there where instead of the covering, instead of sort of the, you know what it is? It's this concept actually I've seen, I've read about it, this mm. toxic is it to- toxic optimism or it's frightening. I don't know there's an expression for it but it's just this you know we had this po- toxic positivity oh my. and if everyone's going around all the times like everything's great right we're missing all this conversation not just conversation but all these opportunities yes I agree and I think about the that your toxic positivity I like it um we're getting none of that from me, I'll tell you right now. Um, <laughs> no, no, no risk of that from you, um, No, what I, so for instance, a couple of things, like when people go into a deal or an arrangement yeah. or a relationship, yeah. now this is personal or professional, yeah. I think there's a real opportunity, I, I don't know, maybe it's because I went the hard way, but it's, there's a real opportunity to be honest from the start about what it is that you want and what it is that you're looking to get out of it and what you can give up. I can already feel anyone watching this bristling. Because you're right, it's it's instinctively people get a bit, oh, hang on a minute, you know, but... Do I put all my cards on the table? Do I put... So I think of it two ways. Now, there's a strategist in me that says you need to play the game all the time, yep. right? And that there is a game to be played and that everyone understands there's a game. And if everyone's playing a game, mm. you can't be the only one, like Don Quixote, riding around on your... You know, thinking that, you know, you're the only sane person left yeah, on the yeah. planet. So there is a game to be played. So you're, so gonna, you're saying if you're the one telling the truth all the time, you're going to get screwed. Well, you may do. Probably. You may do. And I'm not saying this is not just brutal, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, there's showmanship and gamesmanship. Yeah. And, and so there's there's those sort of factors. But what I'm saying is look, look, even if you start from within and say, what do I actually want? What do I actually want? When you're going into a deal. A deal, just getting up out of bed in the morning. <laughs> a job. A job, you know, what do I actually want out of this job, out of this employer? What's enough for me? You know, your instinct is to go and put on the put on the suit that you're never going to wear again and, and put on the show that you never, like it's yeah. it's not the version that they're going to get when you turn up on Monday. Yes. And it's all this game and, oh, negotiating. And it's all just bullshit oh, for you. For you. Thank you. It is. It is all It is all. So, but, but what you're saying, that's actually... There's two things there. There's what you choose to show externally, mm. consciously. Yep. But things like what do I want from this, that, and the other, and asking yourself those things. Yep. That's about being honest with yourself. Yes, which is I wouldn't say particularly common. <laughs> Not we we don't like to look in the mirror and tell the truth. No. I don't think. No, and I think there's certain things that you'll know the truth, but, you know, there's sort of two voices inside there. You'll know the truth, but you'll move it over there. As... I don't like that so much. I just... And, oh, well, since we're here, um, some years ago, I sort of committed to radical self-honesty. Yes. Uh, and it was horrendous. It, it, like, it was, it was, it was honestly <laughs> horrendous. three minutes of your life. No, it, it's the worst more than a decade of my life. And um, it... It's... What does that mean? What Look, people who aren't honest with themselves are not doing it necessarily by choice. So people don't come into their adult, let's say adult life yep. and say, I'm not going to be honest with myself. But what they do do is they get into a series of, of decisions or a series mm. of behaviors where they sort of a teenager, you go to school, you might go to university, you might go to work, 
and you get in a relationship and all of a sudden you're all the way over here and you never even really thought about what it is you wanted out of or who you are or who I am or what I like or what I want and you just end up on this rail and yep. you feel like it's too far gone mm. and you just don't bother about it yep. right and I mean this is a this is a bit trite but you could pretty much anyone could sort of uh, sympathize with that story yep. but how many times does it take a health scare a relationship breakdown, the end of a career or a job. A pandemic. Serious bloody fork in the road until someone actually looks in the mirror and goes, oh, I never wanted to do any of that. Why have I wasted 10 years, 15 years of my yep. life chasing something I didn't want? This is not what I intended to talk about today at all. But... No, but it, it is important because it's easy to, to separate the sort of personal self-honesty and this concept of telling the truth in a professional setting. Yes. But actually, it's one and the same because we bring ourselves. I can't believe I just said that. You bring yourself to work. Did, yeah. Did you bring your crystals with you? And your, and your... You do bring yourself, right? <laughs> you do. So if you don't know who you are, if you don't know who who you are, what you want, you're going to be leading yourself up the garden path every day. And we talked. We've talked before about leaders who yes. haven't been prepared for leadership. Yes, and... which is almost all of them. Yes. <laughs> But if you have no self-awareness, if you've never been honest with yourself about how you lead, how you communicate, what drives you. What your values are. What your values what you care are. About, what you'll accept behaviour How the hell are you supposed yep. to bring a team along with you? It's a very good question, Laura Rackie. And, 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 you know, there's so many um, opportunities in your lifetime that you, you will get hit in the face with the reality that you've never seen. And some people choose to ignore it. And some people, you know, I, I when I used to work with lots of lots of junior lawyers, mm. for there was a period of like six months early on when I was get, getting juniors in my yeah. firm to help me. Not in my current firm, when I was younger. Ooh, younger. Very <laughs> um, and the stuff that kept coming back was trash. Okay. Every time. I, I'd give a piece of work to a junior. <laughs> And it would come back and I think, what the hell is this? This is not what I wanted. And it went on for- Sounds like you weren't communicating very well, Laura Racky. I was getting there, Christian. <laughs> and so what I realized was these kids were coming into my office. I was going a million miles an hour telling them to go and do things that I knew, you know, I was giving them the tip of the iceberg and yep. I knew everything else underneath. Yep. And they were going off, they didn't know what the hell they were supposed to do. Of and so I realised that in myself as a communicator mm. that I need to stop making assumptions about what other people know or don't know and take the time to explain things, mm. to ask people if they've understood yes, yes. what I've explained. So that was a real shock for me because I spent six months or so thinking, mm, everyone's, you know, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it's me, yes, right? Yes. So when we're talking about being honest with yourself and who you are and how you are, if you're not doing that, then when you're coming to work, you're setting the cat amongst the pigeons. Well, you're, you're setting issues. yourself up to fuck. And I, when you when you say sort of understanding know thyself, I'm not saying to sit on a Tibetan mountain for a month quietly. <laughs> and sounds like hell, have, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Oh, sorry, I, I couldn't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. But I'm not saying Imagine that you have to go. And, and I'm not saying that. I mean, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. But the, the way <laughs> I look at it and say... If you were going to go and decide to run 10 kilometers or let's say 30 kilometers a week, you yep. wanted to hit for the, every week for the rest of your life. Yeah. You wouldn't just start. You'd actually start to build, you start to build, you train, you get yeah. injured, you, you, you reset. And looking at your, your sort of yourself as a sort of, I'm not your spiritual being, but the way you think and act and, and your self image and uh, what's the word, self esteem. Yes. It's, it's not dissimilar that you have to build it up on the work you have to do the road work yes. and that is to understand that if this happens in my life i make a bad decision yeah right this triggers me i'm driving in the street and someone cuts me off on my own i don't do anything but if the kids are in the car i panic yes. like, you know like all the little things like, like just to build up evidence in your mind as to this is how i make decisions so then when you go into the work setting you go into a leadership setting you have to go and communicate all of this as, as some no. sort of tomb of honesty but you need to know what it is that makes your decision making. Yeah, or you say to your team, don't ever expect me to make a decision on the spot. 
Never. I might need at least 15 minutes yep. in my office on my yep. own to think about yep. it. So if I say no or I say let me think about it, it's nothing to do with the, the question. Yep. That's just how I process things. And so if your yep. team knows, we've talked about this before we on have, the podcast about have. decision making. If, if your team knows how you make decisions, then they can bring things to you in the, the format that you need. We have gone wildly off topic. Well, that's have nothing we? unusual. Um, but if we drag it back, I'll, I'll just drag it back to a few. Uh, Let's go back to. What if people started telling the truth? What if people started I can't telling? lie. Um, Let's talk about that in a business context. Tendering. Let's imagine. Well, let's say there's a product. Let's say I've got a, a phone here. Yeah. And I and I advertise this phone. And let's say this isn't the phone that it is. It's some other cheap, nasty phone. Yeah. And I go and try and sell it as the competitor to the iPhone. Yes. Uh, and it is clearly inferior. What's going to happen if I sell that for half the price and it's a piece of crap? But in six months' time, I'm going to burn out my product. It might get a, a boost yep. and it's going to be a pump and dump. And yep. that's it, right? And I look at products around the place and I think, imagine if people started telling the truth. And I don't mean like list all the bad things. I'm saying list the the, the, the weaknesses yes. with the strengths yes. so that people can make an informed decision. And imagine how much engagement you can get. Do you get. know, I've always thought, and actually KFC has, have done it. They've nailed it this have year they? with their marketing. But for a long time, I couldn't understand why Maccas and Hungry Jacks and KFC were spruiking all these healthy choices come on mate <laughs> because to me just market to us with what it is that we want to get when we go yes, to market yes. it's 3am i've delicious. been at the nightclub it's disgusting 10 years ago and i want to come and eat a dirty burger and and feel you know satisfied i don't want yes. to come and eat a salad from mcdonald's kfc with their i don't care that to me is that real honesty yep. that yep. this is why you come into our restaurant kfc you want to eat something dirty and delicious and not worry and not care. It's extremely delicious. <laughs> so I, I, that in I terms care. of I love it. from a marketing perspective, <laughs> agreed. That sort of honesty, yes. I love. I love. I agreed, and I think that I just see I see an avenue for it. Now I'm not sitting here. There, there are marketing experts that would be able to show you data that may prove me wrong, but I I doubt it. I think there's a massive segment of opportunity going forward to be able to tell a bit of truth. Yeah. And to say that this punching bag, right, is wonderful. It's 10 kilos lighter than most of its competitors. It can be hung from here, there and everywhere, but it's going to break in three months. But right? it's cheaper than everybody but else. But it's cheaper yeah. and you might have to buy three of them in the time that you have one of these, but it'll still be cheaper over the period of time. Like, um, you got a door, you got a gym, right? Well, okay. But that actually is giving your um, customers the benefit of the doubt to give them the truth Imagine that. and let people decide, let the market decide. You because know. there's a short term sugar hit in sort of don't look over here mm. with your product or service. Tendering, you just mentioned before, is a really interesting one. What if people on either side of the tender, what yeah. if I've got, a, I've got a tender here, it's for services and a product and I say, this is what I want. This is not what I want. This yeah. is a whole bunch of stuff that's been included by people that, that I don't want at all, right? And all these extra services yeah. and, and risk built in and all this. And then over here, the tenderers are like, yeah, we can do all exactly that. Exactly what you've asked. Oh my goodness. That's like, it was written for us. Yes. And everybody's lying. <laughs> in a nice way. Yeah. In a nice way. And I just wonder if we just stripped it down and said, do you know what? We need these three things as an essential thing. If you have got a weakness over here, tell us how you're going to plug yep. it. Those and just because what's the implication of saying in a tender and winning a tender on the basis of something that's not quite right? Yes, you destroy the relationship. You might not get paid, and um, that's it for you with that client or, or that whole industry. Like if you're a big enough business and you go, and I won't mention any 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 lines or companies or anything like that but you go and win a major project for instance and it's your first big major project in that area you can't deliver yeah you know you can't That's deliver it. you're basically making up as you go along that industry is finished for you yes uh, six or 12 months down yep. the line right whereas if you come in and say when you here's our gaps here's how we like you said here's the the extra the other third parties yep. we're going to bring here's in who we're partnering with and the, here's why we've picked them and away we go i think that's you know uh, I know people are nervous about being real. Yeah, yeah, and telling the truth. It's not about it's not about lying. This is just about telling the truth. Going to a job and saying, you know what? I was on X dollars in my last job. I don't need that much. I want to work four days a week. I want to be flexible. I want to do this. Yep. I want to do this. It's not about that for me anymore. And not 
to have the other side of the table feel like, oh no, they're oh yeah, no, we don't know, we don't know how to handle that. Like if everyone was just a little bit more upfront, like yes. if, think about how much different our lives could be. Like how you know, I, whenever seriously. I'm doing contract negotiations, you know, us lawyers, we do all our marking up in clauses, and it just goes backwards and forwards, and I can make the change, and the other side changes it back, and you know, that's the point at which, well, I like to pick up the phone early, but I pick up the phone and say. Why does your client want this or not want this? A certain like clause or something. Tell me yeah, yeah, why. Yeah. yeah. And nine times out of ten, once the discussion about the why, yeah. there is this frankness about here's what we're worried about. This is what we're trying to protect our client from. I go, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Let's find the middle ground yeah. and we'll work it out. But otherwise, if we don't get an explanation and you're just crossing out clauses it's from just... from our contract. We're just going to think the worst, right? Yeah, so, yeah. just this, I think, if being frank was just a little bit more of the business as usual, yes. business as usual, business as usual, right? I just think that a lot of things will go a lot smoother in life. Maybe, maybe, or maybe. I'll tell you what. So let's have a bit of honesty. I think that is the worst segment we've ever done. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? <laughs> I think there's been worse. Maybe the next one will be. Are we moving to the next one already? Oh, look, I think we can. I think it's going to be. Where are we going to talk time. about some fears? Oh, look. Okay. So I you think, don't want to anymore? No, no. Well, I'm a bit fearful about talking about fears. No, in all seriousness. Um, the, let's be honest. Let's be upfront. Let's, the, you know. The, the thing about these these sort of veneers that we put on, I think a lot of them are based in fear, self doubt, imposter yeah, syndrome. Absolutely. I'd love to do a day on imposter syndrome mm. one day because I think it is legitimate. And you know what? If you're not if you're not suffering imposter syndrome, I don't think you're serious about You've you. You've got Dunning Kruger. Uh, it's either imposter syndrome or done improve. They're, they're your choices off the off the list. So I think a lot of it is is based in in fear, um, and we all have many many fears. Like yeah. I have maybe eight hundred and thirty seven. All right, what's one? One fear. Yeah. Um, Come on, we're telling the truth. Truth or dare? Yeah. What's the other? going to pick the dare. Uh, oh, no, 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 I have many many fears. I think I'd say pretty much everything in the world, but. One, one fear would be, I watch the way that sort of the the way that people's lives go today in modern society and the way careers go. And I see that there are, there's a tipping point in, in an age bracket in mm. this country where if you are not either in a certain position of ownership or very serious skill set capability, yeah. you, you're sort of becoming less relevant and less relevant and less relevant. And so the, the drive for me is to stay relevant and in front of technology, trends, behavioural. Yep. And, and, and if you're not on top of that, you're at grave risk at probably about 55 of being of your career being taken out of your hands. When you're ripe, you're rot. When you are ripe, you're rot. And I think if you start to think that because I'm, I've got this much experience and I, I'm, I am on the top hands. of my game, if you're not constantly innovating and driving and changing, like I think about how much my day-to-day -day has changed over 15. It's, it's not the same. My life is entirely different to what it was 15 yes. years ago from a work point of view. Um, and it's going to keep changing. And that's not that I'm scared of it, but I'm scared that if I just got the foot off the pedal at any time, you're just going to mm. tumble through the pack. Yeah. Um, how about you, Laura Racky? What are you scared of? Uh, oh, well, I feel like anything I say is going to be problematic, but... We're already running out of time. <laughs> All right, I'll be Actually, quick. Yeah. I would say one of my fears is to walk into a boardroom yep. and be judged on my gender and not my expertise and my skills. That I is a big that's a fear. That's a very reasonable fear. I think that there is a real problem in diversity. I'm not saying that's not a problem. Yep. My personal view is I don't think quotas are the way to go yep. because I don't want to walk into a boardroom and the assumption be made that it's because I'm a woman. Gender. But you understand that. The, the need for absolutely sort of a lightning, I'm not here a saying I can rod of change I, I'm not saying I, I can solve the problem some other way and yeah. that it's a terrible problem but personally that is a fear for me yeah and that, it's a very real fear that it's, that it, it seems that it's not based on merit that's yeah that's right I'll oh, totally well, get that. I'll totally if, get that. it's funny that no male in the world has ever had no. to think about that isn't that funny? and so I worry that really the assumption funny. is that I might have been the best woman for the job but a bloke might have been better I just skated in. No, on but you might have smacked them out of the park, but the, the impression of you is that's that, what I mean. Is that you, is, smacked is that them out of the park. Of course, what you're talking I mean, about. Honestly, I fear for anyone who goes up against there and anything like that. 